Welcome to West Side Story, where we're talking shit about hockey. Hey, everybody. <laughs> She's been drinking a little bit this evening. That is it's a inaccurate. Friday. It is a Friday night. We do want to welcome everybody to episode seven of West Side Story. Um... We've got an interesting episode today. It's just Anya and I right now. We uh, are actually going to be hopping on a phone call here uh, with an interview with uh, one Mr. David Crawford. He is also known as the floorball guru. Um, if you don't know what floorball is, stick around because he's going to tell us all about it. Dan will be joining us from Seattle Traffic. Uh, yeah, so that's about all the intro shit I think we need to do. I should now be the host. With the most? With the mostest bitches. I can confirm that. So Friday night as you're enjoying your whiskey or your beer, your hockey game, whatever you're doing tonight, um, we thank you for spending some time with us. Without further ado, one Mr. David Crawford. All right, we are pleased to be joined today by uh, by Mr. Dave Crawford, also known as uh, the floorball guru. Uh, I, I want to make sure that we're, we're very clear on, on calling it floorball, and I mean that seriously, uh, because other people would say ball hockey, foosball, whatever, all that good stuff. But this floorball is its own thing. So Dave, introduce yourself. Uh, tell tell your uh, the listeners you know, uh, a little bit about floorball, a little bit about you and how you got involved with it. Yeah, well, well, thanks for having me on. I, I appreciate you taking the time. Um, so, yeah, I started uh, floorball uh, about th- going on three years now. I kind of fell into the sport a little bit when I was doing some different things specific to youth sports, uh, at the time specific to soccer, but I play a little bit of everything. So when I f- saw the sport, I really, it just clicked with me. Uh, growing up, I grew up in Spokane and always wanted to play hockey but never had a lot of opportunities and but we always played in the street and things like that so when i found this this was just a no-brainer to get to get something started and then with background for me working with sports and sports development working with kids and things like that over the last 15 years or so um i just really found a, a click with it and then also just kind of wanted to get it going and really get more people involved in it Right on. I, yeah, I saw you said you grew, grew up in Spokane. Um, you're over on the west side now, right? Yeah, I live in Lacey. I went to school at Western Washington University for my undergrad. Okay. Um, I've been in Washington for at least 32 years. Um, and kind of the main part of eastern Washington, but been in, in living in Lacey for over over 10 years now. Nice. Nice. So tell me a little bit about, uh, and anybody else, if you guys want to jump in, please tell me just to shut up. And I want to know, are you a oh. Spokane fan? Oh, I'm a big Spokane Chief <laughs> fan. <laughs> they're doing good and they're getting ready to play Edmonton tonight. So yes. Awesome. I just yes. wanted to know, I wanted to get that out of the air. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> um, you gotta get your affiliations right away. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I- I get that. <laughs> the lines in the sand are drawn. So no, um, we uh, side note. I mean, we love that, that rivalry. Tri city and Spokane is, is awesome. So, um, I, you know, I'm looking at this, uh, I, I was on your website, um, today I've been on it before, but, uh, cause it sounds like I'm just preparing, you know, last minute today, but I was looking at your FAQ page and, and you, you did a question on there just for, can I use a hockey stick? So I'm assuming that's the sort of thing you get from people a lot that, you know, they, they think it's, it's quote unquote hockey, um, which it's not explain how it's a little bit different or a lot different actually. Yeah. I mean, for a lot of people in general, especially anybody that you know has grown up over the last 30 years, uh, and even before that, they've played floor hockey to some degree, whether that was in physical education classes or they're just playing in the street or, or things like that. So there's a lot of uh, similarities as far as the sport of floorball to hockey. And being a stick sport, it, it's a natural fit to look and feel like hockey. And I, ba- I basically break it down – to there's a couple main differences to the sport uh, and it breaks down to the equipment being different. The sticks are shorter instead of wood or plastic. They're made of a mix of fiberglass or they're focused on carbon fiber. So they're really lightweight, but they're still strong. They have a lot of the same, uh, same similarities as far as characteristics to a hockey stick, as far as the flex and things like that. And then it's a plastic blade 
um, that has more rigidity to it. But again, everything's focused around similar functionality. And really, as you get into a lot of the uh, upper end sticks, the performance and what it provides, uh, and you know, some of the sticks are focused on the lightweight, and we're talking ounces. Wow. Um, for some of them, they're just really lightweight, but they are strong, and you get a lot of performance out of it. So that's the the main one where people look at it like, what is this stick? It's shorter, so it's sized to the belly versus most hockey sticks are sized into the chest or the or the uh, chin. Yeah. Um, and being shorter, you're put into a, uh, a shorter position, but you have more control. And with that, you can control the ball closer to your proximity. So it makes it a, a lot harder to steal. Um, and you just have more control in smaller space. And then the rules. So most of the rules basically throw out the majority of the contact related to uh, stick checks, stick lifting, mm -hmm. and most body contact. You can't do that in floorball. So instead of it be being a um, more, I mean, it still can be a physical sport by all means, but I don't really have to worry about getting decked by somebody because my head's down right. or things like that. So <clears throat> it's just a different, different style, different pace. It's very much a, uh, tactics and, uh, finesse type of a sport, but it's fast. That's for sure. Um, and so that's really a lot of the, the main differences. And, and when you see, um, when I get hockey players that play, a lot of times the first their first instincts is is hockey. They're doing their stick lifts. They're sure. coming in. They're, they're they're doing that. When you're actually playing the rule, the, the, you know those are associated. Those are fouls, penalties, things like that that you just can't do in the same way. So you have to approach it a little bit differently and change the mindset just enough. But when they get it and they understand why it is and what the differences are, um, it, it's it the translation from hockey skill sets carry over very, very easily. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you find, you know, looking at the website, once again, there's a lot of pictures with, you know, like younger kids and stuff like that. Do you, are you able to use the program as kind of like an in with, with athletic, you know, uh, PE classes and stuff like that? Do you guys use it that way? Yeah. So I spend a lot of my time when I started floorball guru focused on the education and just getting people to understand why is this sport different? Why is it valuable? You know, I, I it's interesting uh, because a lot of the negative or the dismissal of the sport comes from hockey where they're like, well, this is ball hockey. So we already do that. We're not going to play that. That looks, that looks silly, but the kids don't care. Right. Kids want to just, they want to play. And I'm down in Lacey, Washington, near Olympia. We don't have ice. We don't have folks that are growing up playing hockey in the same way as, as some other areas that maybe have that, but kids are, are looking for something different. And because the sport itself lends itself to being able to be played anywhere, it doesn't damage floors at all. Um, and you can play it on any surface and it's a lower cost sport. I mean, a stick and a ball. Yeah. Well, what, you know, I mean, the cost for 40 bucks, you've got everything you need to play. That's really attractive for, uh, you know, for kids and for families and things like that. And so I tr my, have tried to get it into schools. Uh, there are some challenges with getting it into schools and most of it's funding because physical education programs across the board are not heavily funded in right. the way that I would like to see them. And I'm yeah. sure those teachers would like to see them yeah. for a number of things. For sure. Um, but and that and so there was also that that equipment component but i saw a need uh and a desire to open those doors so i wrote a book called the floorball guru primer which you can buy on my website or you can buy on amazon um and it basically is that introduction to the sport why is it different what are some of the basic rules and for me i've tried to break the sport down into teaching it to anybody to get them started but not beat them over the head with the rule book on every little thing. But I want to make sure that we're playing the sport as it's intended versus we're just playing a version of ball hockey or street hockey or something like that. Right. So really trying to make sure people understand what's different, how to teach it. I wrote a curriculum, uh, a variety of tactical information and stuff so that somebody I could hand this to anybody. They could learn it. They could teach it and start getting it going on their own, which I do myself. I've been teaching the sport in Lacey through my local parks and rec for three years. 
And we've done youth classes. I started a youth league. I'm working on an adult league as well. Uh, just trying to get people aware of the sport. And my last session, which was January, February, we had 37 kids wow. between ages six and 12 that are showing up. Um, and in one of those age groups, we had over, we had 22 kids in that class. And so I have a friend that helps me teach a lot of this stuff. Um, but the kids, every time they can't get enough of it. They just, they love moving. It's, it's different enough that it keeps them excited. That is awesome. That is awesome. Um, you say, uh, you know, with the program you've got going in Lacey, what sort of, of growth have you seen outside of Lacey? I mean, if I'm, I'm assuming that there's been other things that have, that have sprouted up because of this on the west side over there? It's been slow, um, and, and there's a couple different factors to that. But um, I'll give a shout out to Sal up in Seattle. We've got a, a group, Emerald City Floorball. He's starting a program. He's kind of going through the same thing. I mean, a lot of the majority of the people that are involved in this sport, like myself, this isn't our full time thing. Mm -hmm. I have a full time job. I work in campus recreation as the director of recreation at St. Martin's University in Lacey. Okay. There's my plug for the school. Um, so that's <laughs> That's my day job, and it, it allows me a, a lot of freedom where we play this at the college. And I, I work with, I try to work with groups. I try to get into schools. Um, but Sal's one of those guys who um, has, he's also going out and trying to work with uh, and start classes. He does free classes out of um, uh, typically in like Mountain Lake Terrace area, mm -hmm. uh, looking at Linwood and trying to, trying to get something going. And so he's done, he's doing some things up there. Uh, NHL Seattle has utilized floorball. Uh, equipment and kind of that curriculum to uh, kind of bring hockey into the schools and start teaching variations of hockey and, and some of the other stuff. And, and they're not the only one. There's at least five other uh, NHL teams that have utilized uh, this type of programming focused on floorball, kind of transitioning floorball to hockey to, to fit their needs. Um, so it's, it's slow. And then there's groups around the country uh, in California, Texas, Utah, uh, Colorado, and then go East Coast with Chicago and Illinois and New York and things like that. So it's it's growing, but it's still very much a grassroots effort. What do you feel are are like the the hurdles that are there? I mean, why? Because like like you said, I mean, it's it's so cheap to get into. Um, and and I don't mean that you know to downplay the skill involved with it, but just for what you have to get equipment wise to start, you would think a lot more people would gravitate towards it. What do you, what do you think are the real hurdles that it's facing right now? I think there's two things. Um, number one is education. What is the sport? Why is it different? And it's hard to explain to people because sometimes until they experience it, once I get a stick in your hand, I know whoever you are, I'm going to figure out how to make this sport fun for you. Now, you may not, if you're a hockey person, you may not enjoy it because I have to run. I can't just take <laughs> a couple slides and glide, you know, those kinds of things. And it's very much a, a, a running sport. And we're talking, it fits inside of a hockey rink, but it's 20 by 40 meters is a full rink. So it's a 30, you know, 132 feet by 66 feet. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of, that's a lot of running. Heck yeah. Um, and, but it, it, the bigger, the other hurdles that kind of go into it is, um, finding people that, that are open to teaching mm -hmm. a lot of parks and rec are moving to uh, third party providers instead of providing all the services themselves. And for a number of different reasons. So having somebody that maybe wants to start a business and kind of get in and, and, and do that legwork and, and kind of partner with the city there's pluses and minuses to that. There's also people that want to do that and people that don't and, and all the above. But then we're also fighting with every other sport for, for space in gyms and things like that. So depending on the season, you know, we're going to compete with basketball and volleyball um, in the summertime. That might be a little bit easier, but then people want to be outside. So how can we adapt? So it's maybe we're going to tennis courts and playing outside on the blacktop and doing some different things to kind of get there. Um, so it's, it's just, it's been interesting to kind of watch the progression. Uh, I think it's primed to really blow up. I mean, this sport is already an international sport. It's, um, you know, played in, I think it's like 86 countries around the world. Wow. Um, it's going to be in the world games. Uh, it was in the world games in 2017. It's going to be in the world games in 2021 in Birmingham, Alabama, and they're going to host 
the best in the world. Uh, and then us and Canada are also going to be in that tournament as well. I mean, when you look at the sport, it's basically Sweden and Finland, Switzerland are your top. And then it's Czech Republic, Germany, some of these other uh, European countries. And, you know, we're kind of, we're near the bottom for a number of different reasons, but it's, I mean, it's, it's growing worldwide for sure. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, Dan, you're awfully quiet over there. Oh, yeah, you know, it's pretty unusual, but it's, I'm just having fun. It's almost like, uh, you know, I'm just listening to the episode because it's just great. You got great questions. It's great answers. Um, so sorry to be quiet. You know, I know, again, you're not used to it. I just didn't. I wanted to make sure you were getting any anything out you wanted to, because I know, like uh, Dave Dan told me ahead of time, like you guys have interacted a little bit. I mean, it's not like some some buddy buddy or anything, but I didn't know if there were. What you're not best friends? <laughs> not yet. Yeah. Not yet. We'll get there. Um, well, still still learning, still getting to know people, and that's a big part of yeah. what I try to do is is make those connections. Yeah. Um, I tried to find my niche, like any business, you're trying to find your niche. And for me, it's, it's been the education focus. So I started, uh, three years ago about this time building the business and the business at the time was what, how the heck am I going to do this? And I'm thankful to have a buddy that, that really pushed me. Um, I don't even know what I was going to call it, but he said, it's going to be floorball guru. And we kind of fought like, "Eh, I don't know about that, but (laughs) I've kind of, I, I, it's grown on me a lot. I love that. I love it. So I focus on blogs and writing, writing about the sport. What is it? What am I doing that's working? What am I doing that's failing? Trying to just come up with different things. And then that evolved into doing a podcast. So I do my own podcast as well, talking about similar things. Um, A lot of times it's, you know, it's nothing fancy. Um, I just have an app on my phone and sometimes I just basically hit play and record while I'm driving in the car and just thinking about whatever. Maybe I just got done teaching a class and something worked well or something didn't work well. And I just trying to make it uh, accessible for people to say, well, the sport is, is out there. There's value to it. Somebody's trying it. Here's how they're failing. Maybe it works for me and this and that. Um, and, and, and then I wrote the book and th- now I start selling my own branded equipment to just try to create more opportunities and kind of get people once into my world hoping that they will find that value and want to continue to learn, teach and play, which is kind of like the three pillars that I focused on is, you know, once we get people going, then trying to work with them to provide those opportunities to go and play beyond like schools and things like that, where it's local leagues and, and things like that. Before we uh, let, hey, Dave, oh, I, oh, go, sorry. No, go I, ahead. I had a question. I had a question for you. As far as um, for those people who are familiar with the uh, how is the stri- stick structured what is the ball like, you know, with deck hockey or ball hockey, everything's weighted. For those who aren't familiar with it or have never seen one, can you describe that? And then also a uh, second question would be the translatable skills, like some of the feedback that you've received from folks that do play hockey, how floorball help their game. Yeah. So floorball is focused around everything being lightweight. Uh, the sticks are, like I said earlier, the sticks are, are lightweight and they're, they're, we're talking ounces. And some of them, they're, some of the companies that are out there making stuff, their goal is to get it as light as humanly possible. And boy, they are, but they are still have a lot of performance. You get, I mean, you can move that ball. The ball itself looks like a wiffle ball, but its construction is designed to, again, fight force so you're hitting it and it's going to hold its shape versus a wiffle ball you hit it that thing goes wherever you want you can crush it in your hand a floor ball you can you can start to dent it in your hand but it's going to hold its shape and i guarantee you when that thing hits you you feel it um but it again it's that structural part and so because it's got a little bit of weight to it but still lightweight you can move that ball and put it exactly where you want to go and so when you look at kids that are getting into the sport or anybody everybody wants to shoot they want to hit that they want to hit that upper corner you know make the the water bottle pop off and all that other stuff with a hockey puck that's a lot harder to do for kids in the beginning football immediately kids can do this anybody can do this it's lightweight it moves it does all those things Um, but again it, it can hold its shape i've seen uh, some of the top tier guys in Europe, uh, there's a really great video that that was out there a while back. Um, and he was basically put it through a water cooler and it just stuck through the plastic of a water cooler. So there's a lot of force that can be generated uh, through this equipment to really put some speed on it uh, with accuracy. 
And that's, I think, a really big benefit to the sport. As far as translatable skills, everything works. Um, you know, especially if you're a hockey player that wants to get better at your game, work on your hands. Well, you've got a stick sport that forces you to work on some similar skills, but in a different manner. Because it's lightweight, you really have to have a, a good touch on that ball because it's going to run on you. Now, if you're running with it, how do I move while I'm playing the game? Um, so you're able to build your stick handling skills and, and translate that effectively the more important thing that I see it is when we're teaching kids in the beginning, how do we move in the field of play? So it's not just a, everyone either chasing the ball or the puck um, or one kid that can just, who's really good at skating, just kind of goes around everybody and dominates. Well, that kid is not going to be able to just dominate in the same way because I can move easily. So that deke may work on the ice, doesn't work in the same way on, on land. So how do I change my approach? Um, or just how do we teach positional play to kids and how do we cycle and how do we move the ball and where do we go? And so all these other things that are a lot easier off the ice but they then translate back onto the ice. Hey, remember when we did that? Well, this is how this works on the ice and our movement and those kinds of things. And so it, it provides on the specific to hockey, it is a very translatable sport. For me, though, as not a hockey player, but a lover of hockey, uh, this sport goes to anybody that just wants to get involved in a hockey or stick type sport. Um and be able to bring in the skills from soccer, from lacrosse, uh, basketball, those kinds of things. And, but but working on different skills because now they're going to have to to work on the stick skills that a hockey player has probably been working on for years. That they have that advantage in that regard. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> before we uh, before we let you go, I do want to uh, I want you to guide people. Where can they go to get more information? If somebody you know even wants to go as far as to kind of looking into starting their own program, where where can you send them? Obviously, uh, floorballguru.com is your website. That's I that would I'm assuming be a good place to start. But where else can we go for it? Yeah, I mean I have a lot of different resources on my website. Uh, I mean I've got year you know going on three years worth of blogs where i mean a blog goes out every week and it's a different topic or it's a similar topic so if you're looking for any of that stuff you can search through uh anything that i've done for the last three years um, my book i recommend if, if you want you can go to amazon and you can download it through kindle uh or the, I, there's print versions you can also buy that a print version through my website on uh, through my store on my website as well as equipment um, but I also look at, you know, one of the really fun things about it is just go on YouTube and search floorball and you can pop up a lot of different videos from full on matches. And that's one of the things I really like that the International Floorball Federation has done is they live stream the majority of their events. Hmm. So if it's the International Floorball Championship, I was I was I just stepped down recently, but I was the U19 women's national team coach for the U S oh, nice. and when we went, when we went to Switzerland in 2018, all those games were live stream. You can go back and you can watch those. Um, I know the Texas open is going to be streamed on ESPN three. Uh, and that's coming up in a couple days, I believe. And, you know, so there's a lot of different options and I think a lot of it's just, just watch it, watching the sport helps and learning, um, just kind of get the feel and the flow of the game. Try tracking the ball because it's crazy how quick it is. Um, but it's yeah, there's a, there's some some of those inform those uh, those venues to go to would be my biggest thing is start reading about it, start learning about it, watch it, and then if there's a way to start a program, let me know. I, I'm I, that's a big part of my my business is working and kind of walking hand in hand with people to help them be successful. It, to me, it's not an, it's not just about, I want to sell you equipment. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure your program is successful give you tips and tricks on things that I'm doing uh, because I have a background working in sports development, you know, over 15 years of doing different things, whether it's private, public, governmental, or, or this or that, that I've learned a lot in, in the past of how to kind of approach different things that have worked and, and also help you along the way. So there's, um, I'd love to see more programs start up. It's not just, you know, I'm the only one doing it. I, I definitely want to, and, and I, 
expect to see more people start to get into the space once they fully realize the the long term value the sport will bring. I love it. I love it. Well, Dave, I appreciate your time, man. Uh, Anya, Dan, anything else you guys want to add to any other questions? No, I'm excited to. Um, I just followed you on Instagram, so I'm excited to watch a little video. I saw that you posted one, so it'll be fun to learn. Yeah, I, I did. Yeah, and then that was the that's one of the latest things I do was was trying to do YouTube and step out a little bit for 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 my comfort zone, but also just talk about what how to how to how do you get started teaching yeah. it, uh, and just you know what if whoever it is get going. But I think. I think at some point maybe we need to figure out a, a way to, to get a game going and, and get you guys playing this at some point. Yeah, for sure, man. I would be excited. I'm, you know, as somebody that grew up on the East Coast and ice hockey wasn't really a huge thing there, when when the days showed up that we played uh, uh, ball hockey in PE, those were my favorite days. I just loved stick sports. So um, now that I've played ice hockey a little bit more. You um, love stick sports, but you can't skate, so you're always I a goalie. I can't skate with <laughs> shit, man. So, hey, um, that's a win right there. I know, I know, but I can I can run. I can run, so. Um, all right, man. Well, I appreciate it, bud. We'll uh, we'll put that information up there, and I know you're in the, the Cascadia Hockey Group, so anytime you've got stuff that comes up, feel free to post it in there and, and, and get people excited about it. Yeah, I'm really excited for the growth of this sport in general across the country and even throughout North America. There's some great things happening in Canada as well. Um, and, and I'm actually, I'll, and I'll plug it, I'm offering a, an international floorball camp in Lacey in 2021. We're going to start promoting it and hopefully bring folks from around the world to this area to oh, learn fine. and play and just be. So it's, uh, and there's information on my website about that as well. So really just in that marketing, pushing, and, and just trying to, again, spread the word. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, everybody go check out Floorball Guru, uh, web stu- or we- I'm sorry, website, Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff. So Dave, seriously, I can't thank you enough for your time today, man. Hey, thank you guys. I appreciate you taking the time. Hey, for sure. We'll talk later. Cheers. All right. Bye-bye. He just said cheers. That's like my all time word that I use for everything I say. <laughs> just wanted to, just wanted to let y'all know that. Dan, please tell me you, did, you didn't fall asleep, right? And I don't mean that that was a boring interview at all. So, but you're you're still alive. Who me? Right? Yeah, you. Oh no, no, no! I didn't fall asleep. I just okay. drove home. But you guys, that was a great interview. <laughs> I was just, I was just enjoying it. I'm like, well, sh- I don't need to jump in. Brother's got it handled. So, <laughs> I felt like I did want to ask him about the translatable skills because I don't think he covered that as much uh, yeah. as as I wanted to. Like just. So people might be able to pick, but, um, but yeah, that was a great interview and, uh, really, really well-spoken guy. I, I feel like I've seen, um, Everett or Seattle, they've used this before, haven't they? Like the, the, they go into schools and stuff and they play with them. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. They did that. Um, Everett's done that, um, uh, Wolfa, you know, we had him out at our, when he first started, we had him out at our, um, our, beginning of the season um thing and everett also does the deck hockey every year so okay. they kind of they kind of feature a little bit of everything but yeah there's uh there's other folks that are out there in the nhl and things like that that are proponents of it that are you know doing the Pavel barber thing with floorball sticks yeah yeah um speaking of everett uh by the way we're just going to continue the recording right now just so you guys know i don't okay i didn't make that very clear um, Everett, uh, first place. Um, yeah, first place. And I just saw the CHL rankings today. They are now ranked number four. Spokane has an honorable mention. Spokane's getting in there, but um, Portland has fallen to number six. Yeah, because they can't they, uh, beat Everett anymore. <laughs> no, I was uh, I was at that game. Uh, oh yeah, with my friend with my friend Wildbird, and um, <laughs> and uh, it. I was chatting with the people beforehand. I was like, how up for you for this game? Or how up is the team for this game? Because they just played, what, three games in four days or three games in three days? Three and three, yeah. Like, I'm like, I don't know. We'll see. But I was like, man, this is like Seattle-Portland when when both those teams are doing well. They better be ready to throw down. And Everett just came out swinging. <laughs> so, so it was nice say, to see. Are you more of an Everett go to see a game or a Seattle go to see a game? Cause aren't you kind of like in the line? I'm like, 
so I'm more of a Seattle fan traditionally because I watched them when they were the Breakers okay. and, the Th- and the Thunderbirds at Mercer Arena and stuff like that. I grew up in the South End, but it was moved out of there by the time they hit uh, hit Kent. Um, so I'm kind of equal opportunity. I'll go. <laughs> I'll go. I'll, I'll go up to Everett to watch a game if my Everett friends want to watch a game. A lot of people with season tickets yeah. there. Or if uh, people want to head down, I'm pretty equidistant to both. It's about a 20-minute drive. Okay. Um, and, and you know, so I play in the Everett community ice rink, so I know the people around the team in the rink. And yeah. I am from the south end, so I kind of feel a pull both ways. Um, but I just like to see both teams succeed, frankly. For sure. I have affiliations with both. <laughs> We're looking forward to it. We uh we just got some tickets for uh for Sunday to go to the the Seattle Everett game there yeah. at the uh, Showwear Center in Kent. So we're pretty stoked about that. Nice. Did you see the big Everett news today? Uh, which one? I saw two of them. Yeah, the I was thinking the Kendop signing with uh with uh Anaheim. Yep, and Jake Christensen signed with Columbus today. I uh, know, pretty darn exciting. That those uh, those boys are getting a look, a good look. It re- it it reminisces for me back to two years ago when, and I talk about this often, but when the Americans were doing really well, and then they hit Everett in that championship series, and everybody said, "Oh, Everett can't, Everett can't do it. They don't have that top end talent." You know, the Americans <laughs> were rolling with like five draft picks at that point. And what happened was Everett had that top end talent. That top end talent was just really young at that point, and they hadn't been discovered. And now all that top end talent's been discovered, and there's just signings up the yin yang for, for, for Everett. So, so my question is, why didn't they get drafted? Well, they were young at that point, and and I like Christensen was on uh, an amateur tryout with uh, the Stockton Heat. I I think earlier this year, and he stayed for a while there, and then they sent him back. Um, and yeah. now he has signed with, uh, with Columbus, which Christensen a couple weeks ago, or not even a couple weeks ago, a week ago, Everett was in town and he quietly scored a hat trick. So, nice. um, they're really good. They're really As good. As one does. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that happens a lot against gonna, the Americans this year. I'm just going to score a hattie cause you know, <laughs> why not? I, I, I can, but. Don't make a big deal out of it. <laughs> well, <laughs> Mr. Ty Smith this weekend, I mean, that guy threw down five goals. He 10 points in two games, eight points in one game. I mean, the, the, it's it's crazy to watch defensemen in, in the dub sometimes, how they can just score like forwards. It's just crazy. Yeah, it is. It's it's really crazy. Those would be, even though he's a devil, he'll be fun to watch for further on down the road. Um I want to uh, I want to talk a little bit of women's hockey stuff today, um, which once again heck. that what's that? I was gonna say heck yeah. Um, something I missed, and I feel terrible that I missed this. Um, but oh, and I can't. Her name just escaped me. Uh, Blake uh, Bolden, I believe. Yeah, she is a, a scout with the LA Kings now. That just happened a few weeks ago. Yeah, that's one of the things that I wanted to mention. She's uh, yeah, she's scouting for him. She was was she the Willie O'Ree of uh, National Women's Hockey League? I think she was. Yes. Yeah. Meaning, meaning the first black female player um, in the in in the NWHL. So yeah, and uh, LA Kings picked her up as a scout. So seems like people are hiring the right people for the right job. Much like Cami Granado up here. Yeah, yeah. Um, there seems to be a lot more um, females getting into like the coaching and the the front office stuff, and even in the scouting. I think it's great. Um, uh, Blake did a video with uh, with Wyclef Jean, um, uh, 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 Bryce Salvador, a couple other uh, players from the New Jersey Devils. Uh, they did a video together, um, and actually, our, our buddy Kwame directed it and all that stuff. So it turned out really well. But for Black History Month. Um, which is now officially quote unquote over, but dear, there, there are so many great stories that came out of last month that, 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 that this needs true. to be all year long. I mean, yes, screw this once absolutely. a month thing. Uh, 
but anyway, they did a cool little video that was on NHL.com and all that stuff. And, and, and big props to Kwame. If you guys want to check it out, I think you just go to NHL.com and search, just search Wyclef Jean and it should pull it up. Um, but it was cool for her talking about, you know, how she got into hockey and all that stuff. Um, and, and not only is she, is she a female, but being a black female, I mean, there's, there's major hurdles she's had to go through to get to where she's at. Yeah, there are a ton, um, from some of my players, some of my friends, um, that happen to be black ice hockey players. There are far more hurdles. I mean, some of them are as simple as DC, you go to DC and, uh, you know, some folks there are like, Oh, I didn't even know we were welcome in there. And this is, you know, their home their home city and so you know it's easy for us to sit here and say well why aren't you playing hockey um and and that's why you know just getting in the door sometimes is a big hurdle yeah um and and then you know no matter what level you're playing at you know every year there's more and more stories of racism and people shouting things that they ought not to and some players on other teams doing the same thing so we got a long way to go but uh if you're going to be hockey is for everyone, you got to bring that diversity into it. For sure. And I think it's gotten better. I mean, a lot of things have come to light, which are, are being dealt with. There's definitely still that culture. I mean, we just had the, the situation this year with Brandon Manning. We talked about that on Cascadia a week or two ago with Brandon Manning and yep. his racial slurs and all that stuff. And um, it's, it's, it's sad, but, but once again, I mean, I, I'm the type of person, like, I don't want to do just black history month. I just want to celebrate diversity all the time. And, and I don't mean that to sound like, you know, super politically correct or anything, but there's so many awesome stories. I mean, just, just learning about Wyclef and and his love of, of hockey and the devil's organization and all that stuff. And, you know, I'm a big fan of the Fugees and everything. So, um, I love that stuff. And, and like I said, 28, and, and we give it the shortest month out of the year, 28 days is just not enough to talk about it. So, absolutely. Um, what else? This Maybe. month is Women's Month. Is is March Women's History? Yes. Okay. Yeah, lots of stuff. I don't know it. I'll have to research <laughs> it and report back. <laughs> Come on, you're you're an insider here. I, know. I thought you had. <laughs> I wish no, no. It. Um, you had one job. One, one job. <laughs> Uh, one thing I wanted to mention is this weekend is the start of the Isabel Cup playoffs yes, for the yes, NWHL. Yes. So the Whale and the Buttes uh, are going to go one game, a uh, one gamer, to find out who plays the Pride because, of course, the Pride gets a bye yeah, this first blah, round. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, and then the and then the you know with only one loss you kind of get to rest a little bit. <laughs> you but, need to um, do what you want. <laughs> Yeah, so winner of the Whale and the Buttes plays the Pride and the Ribs and the Caps, the White Caps face off against each other um, for those first opening games. Um, and, you know, you never know. The playoffs start to a whole new season, yep, as the absolutely. cliche says. And uh, the Whale, Buttes, Ribs, and Caps are all pretty darn close in there. And who knows? Maybe one of them turns up the heat and, you know, and uh, beats the pride. I I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna be completely honest. I don't want the Boston Pride to win. <laughs> <laughs> is I, that is that is that because they're so dominant, or just yes, because? I feel like every time I would watch them every weekend, I would hop on and they were playing, and it's just like, except for the last game, and I believe they were playing the whale. Whaler, yeah, and it was actually pretty close up until the third, and then the Boston Pride just came in. It's like, whoosh! Here's four goals, and you get one. <laughs> but- <laughs> yeah, they just they just have that the couple of games this season, a lot of games this season. Yeah, but really, really a couple of games that were kind of close. They just have the ability to flick the switch and just like, yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna start raining pucks on you, Goldie. You like it's practice. You better watch it. Absolutely, and it's for me. It's like I love to watch the game, and I love a competitive game, and I love it when there's it's back and forth, and you don't know who's gonna win it, and it's competitive. But it just seems like this season, it just it hasn't really been very competitive. It's just been when Boston plays, Boston wins. So yeah. I am so bummed. I actually missed the game that they lost. <laughs> Minnesota beat them, right? Yeah. <laughs> Is that right, or did the Riveters beat them? I forget. No, the Riveters well, didn't. And I was going to say, with with as good as Boston's done, hasn't Minnesota been right there on their heels? Yeah, they've been um, – the. I forget the standings right now, but, um, but yeah, Minnesota has not been far behind them. Let me 
let me let me check here because the standings Minnesota is no slouch when it comes to when it comes to the standings. So let me see. I mean, yeah. So Minnesota, it's uh, twenty three and one for Boston. Minnesota is seventeen and five and two. Okay. So so not too far behind him. No. And then kind of the Met, the Metropolitans, uh, the Buttes. And the whale kind of fall below. Like uh, the whale is almost oddly, uh, because they came so close to Boston. The whale is two twenty and two. Wow. <laughs> uh, the the buttes are eight fifteen and one, and the Metropolitans are ten thirteen and three. So kind of the bets are out there that it's going to be Minnesota and Boston in the final. But the buttes and or excuse me, the, the Whitecaps and the Riveters are pretty darn close in the standings. It sure. should be closer games than uh, the standings would otherwise suggest. How does how does it work? Uh, these are not series, right? These are single-game elimination, aren't they? So the first game, uh, the first game is, uh, what did I say? I just had it here. It's the Buttes. It's the Buttes whale, yeah. and then the winner of the, winner of that goes and plays the uh, winner. The winner goes and plays the pride, the ribs and the caps, and then the winner of those two face off in the final. Okay. Um, the the final is I forget the schedule. Let me check playoff <laughs> schedule. Stand by. Sorry, man. No, I was driving. No, you're so good. Not, <laughs> That's what no, editing's for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't have exactly. it ready either. So we don't edit anything around here. We we keep it raw, man. We keep it real. No, I don't. Like yeah, that. I don't. Yeah, I, to be truthful, I uh, can't find the schedule quickly, so I don't want to keep everybody hanging on. Sure. But sure. yeah, the, the the first game is single elimination. Um, they have done it home and home in the past, um, and I don't recall. I. Th- I think it's all single limbs, but I'm not 100 percent positive on that. Okay, okay. Well, regardless, the uh, the NWHL uh, playoffs are upon us, and we will have a new Isabel Cup uh, champion here not too long down the road. So um, we know Anya's truly, truly rooting for Connecticut, um, but not expecting that to happen. So no, no. she's just shaking right. her head right now. No. It's all good. <laughs> Well, I mean, I tell you, we we spent a lot of time with uh, with Dave this episode, and went, like like I said, I'm glad we did. That was good. Um, I would encourage everybody to check out uh, his website and Facebook and Instagram and all that stuff. Before we go, uh, this episode will be posted on Friday night, nine o'clock Eastern time. I do want to remind everyone we will be in Seattle on Sunday, the eighth. Um, we're excited. Anya and I are gonna go over and and check out the. Um, uh, the Black History Tour, uh, which is a, a traveling museum sort of thing. Our buddy Kwame is the curator of that, and we're pretty excited. I think we're finally going to meet uh, Mr. Brown face to face over there. Is that is that correct? That is a hundred percent correct. I will Yay! meet you guys and right, Ferda. Yes, um, I'll uh, I'll meet you guys down at the uh, whenever you get in town. I'll meet you down there at the at the truck tour. And then, uh, you know, we can actually get some pictures face to face. So it's, you know, yeah. all three of us, not just you and Anya all the time. Not that you guys don't have beautiful faces, <laughs> but you need, you need, you need my ugly mug in there to balance you guys out. I agree because I still am trying to find a picture of what you look like. Oh, I've seen him. I've seen him. I know, but it's, I don't think uh, they're very recent pictures. So hmm. what if he's all like look, rough and look, think, scary? Think like, uh. No, not rough and scary. <laughs> Think like um, uh, heavier Dennis Leary. Heavier you Dennis know? Leary. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I've kind of got the uh, you know Dennis Leary is uh, I've kind of got the the Irish face. You know, he's, he did that one thing where he's like, uh, I traveled to Ireland and uh, everybody looked like me. Yeah, and that's kind of <laughs> that's kind of the running that's kind of the running joke with my wife and I. Okay. If we go to Ireland, it'll be like, hey, there's a ginger dude. It looks like, well, that guy. Oh, and that <laughs> woman. And that dude, too. 
I'll text you what I'm going to wear so you know which Irish guy I am. <laughs> that would be helpful. Well, you, you'll see. Our, I mean, I've got the beard that everybody notices. So um, Yeah, you guys are going to be easy to pick out. Flyers gear and the beard. Well, Heck yeah. I don't know if I'm going to bring the flyers gear up there. We'll see. We'll see. I am. I'm going to wear my beanie. Actually, how, or that or my Vegas hat. However. Because I can't buy NHL Seattle stuff. That's true. That's true. It's, it's March. Where's the name already? I know, For real. I know. I'm not even. Uh, people, I saw a post yesterday somebody's like if they don't do it soon I'm selling my tickets and everybody's like all right cool we'll take them because there's 30,000 people waiting on them so <laughs> yeah never mind the fact that those those of us the hoi polloi that don't have suites haven't even been offered tickets yet so right. good luck I know I know yeah you'll probably sell most of your tickets anyway because you got 41 games if you're willing to invest you know several right. grand in it right for yeah. real yeah, that's always fun. <laughs> so, um, a reminder that the tour will be at the African American Museum uh, uh, on Saturday the seventh. Willie O'Ree was supposed to be there because of the shitty beer virus. He's not traveling there, um, but Kwame will be there. And then Sunday, it will be at the um, uh, International Fountain uh, at Seattle Center, which is right next door to. Are we are we still calling it Key Arena right now until it gets an official new name? Yeah, I mean it's just the arena but okay. yeah it's it's for those of us who live in the city it'll be key arena probably until after they rename it gotcha gotcha so it's there sunday and then tuesday uh it's somewhere as well and i don't remember where but uh so if you're in or around uh the seattle area check it out it's there so. and come find us yeah come find us for sure dan i always appreciate your time man you're home now the family ready to hang out yeah yeah i think so Probably. I don't know. <laughs> They're creeping. Looking they out might, the front, front they door. Might, they might, I might just walk in the door and they might say, get the hell out of here. For real. For real. <laughs> Go do something. Who the hell is this you guy? Know. You weren't supposed to be home for an hour. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I wouldn't blame him a bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I know how. Now we're feels. gonna go. We're gonna go in and hang out because it's one of the few nights during the week that we can hang out because we don't have hockey practice or hockey practice or piano lessons or any of the other stuff that we do <laughs> on a regular week. Well, on that note, uh, this has been West Side Story. We want to thank Michael Pellegrini for uh, allowing us to use his music yet again. It's I love it. it it's reminiscent of. 90s grunge and that's seattle to me so um check him out he's got a sound cloud sound cloud page m pellegrini uh you can also find him on twitter so babe any parting words peace out we'll see you sunday dan any parting words uh i think anya just took him from me so yeah yeah no. on that note stay safe be healthy you know, wash, wash your hands. hands wash your freaking wash, hands wash people. your hands a lot yes. say happy birthday twice Use Purell. Sorry. I've been in hospital mode pretty much <laughs> all, all week long at work, and I cannot stress enough. Yeah. You know, go do that stuff because it's for real this time. Well, on that note, I'm going to say out. <laughs> <laughs>